Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. Let's get started. Now, this puzzle is a little different than the other ones because it is easy to draw, but not that easy to calculate. Usually, when I make these puzzles, I first have to hand draw everything and then calculate, and then using those values, I have to, uh, you know, uh, I have, I can just accurately draw that on Desmos. That's pretty much what I do. But for this one, fairly easy. We have a unit square. Inside the unit square, we have a semicircle with radius one half and an equilateral triangle with side length one. Fairly simple, right? Okay, easy, basic setup. Now, there's another reason uh, that this puzzle is a little different from the other ones because I, initially I wanted to ask for the shaded area. But then the solution kind of um, seems a little complicated and also the answers don't really come out nicely. Uh, but I'll talk about that too. I, I want to mention how uh, the area can be found, but I'm not going to do the calculations, okay? So maybe I can do that first and then we can get into the question which is finding a. So let's start with the area. Okay, how about that? Now, so if you're trying to find the area of this shaded figure, which we're not going to do, but I'm just going to show you the method here. Basically, what you can do is you can drop a segment here from that point all the way down this way, okay? And then uh, this segment is actually critical because then this is going to be the center of the semicircle, obviously. We'll make another connection this way and we'll make this connection as you can see here. Okay, awesome. Now, here's the critical part. We can find the uh, area of this triangle, right? Okay. We can find the area of this triangle. So what we can do is we can, we also have a circular sector here, which is given by this angle. So this angle is not uh, a very nice value. That's why I kind of gave up on that idea, but at least I'll give you the theory. Okay. So we, basically what we can do is we can find the area of that sector because that would be a circular sector. And from that sector, if we subtract the area of this triangle, and this triangle, then we'll have the area. Make sense? That's basically the idea behind this puzzle. Great, okay. So let's see how we can find uh, what is being asked. Let's go back to it. I just wanted to, you know, briefly talk about this area here, but our goal is gonna be a little different here, which is kind of nicer. Okay, so we are going to find the length AB. Now, how do you find AB? Well, first of all, AB is not a part of a triangle. It's kind of like a, you know, round shape. So, but we're going to make it a triangle. Let's go ahead and connect and let's call this point C, even though it wasn't labeled. We can call that. Let's go ahead and connect A and C here, right? Okay. So now notice that BAC is a triangle, but it's a special triangle. Why? Because uh, from symmetry, and I think, um, should we have to mention it? No, I don't think so. We didn't have to mention it, but I think it's kind of obvious that uh, this figure is symmetrical, and from symmetry, we see that uh, this uh, AC is parallel to the base. Therefore, if this is 60 degrees, which is because equilateral, this is also 60 degrees. Since this is 60 degrees, this is also 60 degrees. Therefore, this is also 60 degrees. So what are you getting? You're getting an, another equilateral triangle. So, and these two triangles are similar basically, right? So if I can find one length like AC, then I have AB and BC. And we are supposed to find AB so I can find AC instead, right? Because it's equilateral. Nice. So how do you proceed? about, or how do you go about finding AC or AB, right? Again, we're going to make our connection as before. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this perpendicular all the way down to the base. And then that length should be the side length for the square, which is one, right? The whole thing is basically one. Okay, now one thing that's critical here is how do you find some of these lengths. For example, can you find the height of this triangle and how do you find it, right? That's a good question. Well, if you mark this point, for example, let me tell you what's going on here. This is going to be one half, right? Because it's just half of it. And the whole thing, the rest of it is also gonna be one half. Now, if you do know this length, which at this point, we don't, but here's the thing. We can find the height of this equilateral triangle, right? Its base is one. So this is one half. This is 60 degrees. Therefore, the longer leg is just going to be root three over two. So this piece here 
is root 3 over 2, right? This is root 3 over 2. Well, if I subtract one half from it, right, then I'm going to be finding this piece, which is going to be that one. So it's going to be root 3 minus 1 over 2. Now, does that really help us? Well, it might. I don't know. We'll find out. How do you find out? Well, here's one thing we can do. We can go ahead and try to calculate this length here. Well, how do you calculate that length? Well, we know that the uh, radius of the semicircle is one half, right? You see how this puzzle is different from the other ones? We're kind of proceeding differently. So from one half, we can subtract that length. So it's kind of like this. One half minus root three minus one over two. And that's going to give us two plus, actually rather minus, not plus, two minus root three over two. Cool. So that's going to be that little tiny piece there. Why? Because root three is kind of close to two. And if you divide by two, you're going to get a small number. So that makes sense. So this is going to be two minus root three over two, that length there. Okay, cool. All right. So now we pretty much have all those lengths, but how can I find or how can I use that to find the height or the base of this triangle, right? That's going to be an interesting question. Well, one thing we can do, one, one thing we can do, since we pretty much know all the lengths, we can make this connection, okay? Let me use a different color so that, you know, it's, it doesn't look very confusing. So I'm going to make that connection again. Remember, we've done that before for the angle. Okay, so this is a right triangle, as you know. Now, we don't know the base, right? But we do know something. The hypotenuse is one half, right? Cool. And then this little piece we know, that little piece we know, whatever. Uh, we don't know the height of this triangle, but if this is x, let's call the half of the base x, which makes sense. So that uh, ab would be 2x, in other words, right? Whatever we find. This would be root 3x, correct? Awesome. Now, what I can do here is I can basically, can I use Pythagorean theorem? Absolutely. How? I'm going to go ahead and uh, add x squared plus root 3x plus 2 minus root 3 over 2 squared, and that's going to equal 1 half squared. So let's go ahead and do it. And from there, by using the Pythagorean theorem, we should be able to find x. Okay, let's proceed. Now, that looks like a nice color. Let's use that one. Okay, so it's going to look like this. x squared plus square root of x plus that piece up there, 2 minus root 3 over 2 squared is equal to 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth, right? That's my hypotenuse. So basically, I'm using this triangle here, that right triangle. Again, we're using Pythagorean theorem, but guess what? I'm going to show you a second method after this. So you'll get to see two different approaches. Okay, cool. Now, Obviously, I'm just going to have to expand this. Let's do it. x squared plus uh, 3x squared plus, if you multiply these two terms in double, you're going to get rid of the, um, what's it called? Um, the half, right? So it's going to look like this. Plus, I'm going to square that guy over there, which is, which is going to be the 2 minus root 3 squared, which is 4 plus 3, 7 minus 4 root 3. Kind of like a radical expression divided by 4, and that's going to equal 1 fourth. Nice. So that should be it, right? I have three terms for that one, x squared and one fourth. Cool. So let's go ahead and put it together. Um, and one of the things we can do is we can add these up. That's going to give us 4x squared. And also we can multiply everything by 4 to eliminate the fractions. If I multiply by 4, I'm going to be getting something like this. Uh, at this point, you may or may not distribute. doesn't really matter. At the end, we're going to have to do it at some point. Plus uh, 7 minus 4 root 3 is equal to 1. So we can go ahead and subtract the 1 and get a complete quadratic. Oopsies. 16x uh, squared. Uh, I don't know. Is, is Does that bug you too? 8 root 3. Okay, I'll distribute it. 4 times 3 is 12x. And then minus 1 is going to give, uh, give us 6 here minus 4 root 3. Okay, obviously from here we can find the x value and then double it to find the ab. So how do you find the x value? There's going to be, uh, you know, two solutions. Uh, let's go ahead and see what they look like. So, negative b, negative b. By the way, um, let's take a look at the Vieta's formulas here. So 6 minus 4 root 3, uh, 4, um, 4 root 3, which one number is greater, right? Well, if you square 4 root 3, you're going to get 16 times 3, 
which is 48. If you square six, you're gonna get 36. So that means this is a negative quantity. This is negative, okay, less than zero. And 16 is positive, so the product of the roots is negative. The sum, I believe, is positive, but let me double check that. Uh, this is gonna be 64 times three, which is 192, that's correct. Okay, so this is a positive sum, but a negative product, which means that one of the roots is negative, so we're not even gonna accept it, right? So we, we're gonna go with the positive solution. Cool, sounds good, okay. Negative B plus minus, so I don't need the minus sign, plus the square root of B squared. Okay, so I gotta square this radical, okay? Minus 4AC, uh, 4A is gonna be 64, so I gotta multiply this guy here, another radical by 64, and then all over 32. Okay, so when we simplify this, we're gonna get the answer and we're just gonna double it, or if you want, if you can just double it. No big deal, okay, so let's simplify this as much as we can, uh, let's see, okay. So eight uh, root three squared is gonna give us 192, their product and doubled is gonna be 192 root three, right? I could probably take out some numbers like four or eight, whatever. It would make it easier, but anyways, we didn't. 144, and then six times 64, that's gonna be two times 192 is the 384. Um, I think it's at the same time. Is that 18 squared? No, I don't think so. That's 324, Never mind. 64 times four is gonna be 256 root three, right? Let me check my work again. Um, yep, that is correct. Okay, cool. So. This guy over here is square rooted and then all over 32. Nice. Let's simplify this. Uh, X is equal to 12 minus eight root three plus, okay, 192 plus 144 minus 384. So when we add these two guys here, uh, let's do the radicals. I think we're gonna get a negative value from here, right? Uh, am I doing it right? 336, yep. So 384 minus 336, that should give me a negative 48. Okay, cool. So then we're getting the following. Um, 256 minus 192 should be uh, 64. So that's gonna be 64 root three um, minus, because that's gonna be a negative 48, right? Okay, cool. So we can take out a 16 there. Um, I think that will help us simplify. X equals, okay. Um, if you take out a 16, it's gonna be, the square root of 16 is gonna be four. So I should be getting a four here. Inside, I took out a 16, so it's gonna be four root three minus three. Uh, I don't think this can be square rooted, can it? I don't know, doesn't matter. I don't think so. It's probably gonna stay like that. Okay, cool. Now, what we need to do is, obviously we need to double this number and then two X is gonna be AB and AB is gonna equal 12 minus, oh, by the way, I forgot to divide everything by what am I talking about? I forgot to divide everything by four here, so let's find x first, okay, never mind. Three minus two root three plus two times, wait, am I dividing by four or two? Okay, four, right? So that would simplify a great deal, I think, right? That would be nice. Okay, dividing by four everywhere, this is gonna be eight. Now I gotta double it because a, b is equal to two x, and that should equal three minus two root three plus the square root of four root three minus three all over four. And that should be the AB value. Now I told you that I was gonna show you the second method. We don't have to completely solve it, but at least I'm gonna show you uh, the approach and then hopefully you can also proceed that way. Okay, cool. So that's gonna be our answer. I'm gonna come back to it. Uh, let me go ahead and show you the second approach here. Now the second approach involves some, um, uh, what's it called, analytical geometry. So let me clean up this area here. So I want you to notice a couple things here, first of all, let's clean everything up. Okay, start with the clean slate, here we go. Now here, uh, what I'd like to show you is basically, notice the uh, point A here, point A is critical, why? Because if you can find uh, how far A is from the x-axis and the y-axis, uh, especially from the y-axis, because basically this is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so drop a perpendicular here. So basically that represents the x-coordinate of A. So how do you find x? If I can find x, what I can do is, let me show you what I can do with that. I can just drop my original perpendiculars, you know, and then what I can do here is, you know, I'm gonna clean that one, right? Okay, make a better one. Okay, now, what we can do here is, this is one half, right? So if I can find this length, that means I'm finding this length, which is x again. 
and then double it, you're going to find the answer. That's the idea. But the, the million dollar question is, how do you find the coordinates of A or just the x-coordinate of A, right? And the answer is analytical geometry. And it, it's beautiful. A lot of times we use the, uh, that technique in geometry problems. So, okay, what? so I do need the equation of the circle. Well, this circle has the center at one half comma one, and its radius is one half. So we can basically write the equation of the circle as x minus one half squared plus y minus one squared is equal to one fourth. So that's the equation of our semicircle. The bottom one, but doesn't really matter here. Okay, what about uh, this line here? Well, that line makes a 60 degree angle, so it's slope. And if you take this point as the origin, zero comma zero, which is what we did for the circle, uh, you can write the equation of the line as y equals square root of 3x because it's uh, mx uh, plus b, but b is 0 because the line goes through the origin. So if you simultaneously solve these two equations, you're going to get the exact same value for x. Well, uh, that basically brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.